afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Way Forward Workshop Leader Lunch Break, where we are pleased to welcome Dan Weekly to our conversation. Dan is a native of West Virginia whose career took him across the eastern seaboard, Virginia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and South Carolina until he finally and happily landed in Cleveland. He took the reins as president and general manager of Dominion Ohio less than a year ago on January 1st of this year, and his months of leadership in a new community have brought both challenges and opportunities. When he came here, he brought with him a wealth of experience in the industry dating back to 1989. He's held a number of roles across the company's natural gas businesses, including external affairs, vice president and general manager of Southern Pipeline Operations, and most recently as vice president for innovation, policy, and development. In that role, he led the company's business areas in developing and implementing innovative energy policies. Despite the demands of his career in various geographies, he always made it a priority to become engaged in the community and served on numerous boards. Cleveland is no exception. He's immersed in service on the board of Greater Cleveland Partnership and involved with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and probably a few more since I did my research. He has said that successful leadership requires folks who can work as a team, identifying the challenge and setting a course for improvement without getting bogged down in side issues. Dan, thank you for joining us today and for sharing your words of inspiration. Well, well thanks so much for the opportunity to, to speak today. And, and I say speak because I gotta tell you, I'm hoping this is a conversation more than anything else. And, and first of all, let me start off. You, you should never start this way, but I'm gonna start with an apology. And my apology is I'm actually working off my iPad because Dominion blocks Zoom because it is not secure. So we always, Kyle and others and Stephanie Moore and others, we, we always have to find a workaround. So hence the reason my camera is a little bit funky. So I apologize for that. Uh, I will also say that, you know, when you asked me to do this several weeks ago, I said, you realize I'm like the anti-PowerPoint guy because I just, I just don't like PowerPoint and rather talk right off the cuff. So I'm trying to, to make this as conversational as possible. So again, thanks for the opportunity to, to talk today. Um, you're right. I have moved around for Dominion at quite a few places. Uh, I've been fortunate to be in my energy career more than 30 years. And, and uh, I, I will tell you my ability and moving my family, this is our seventh move. So, uh, and every one of them has been great. Uh, I, I will tell you, I get this question all the time. Where do I live? I'm not sure why people are fascinated by that, but they, they ask me all the time. I live in downtown Cleveland and um, I'm really pleased with that. Uh, my wife and I, have just been overwhelmed with the, with the area. Um, I, I cannot tell you how much we've enjoyed our short time here. Again, been here roughly a year, but Cleveland has a lot to offer and it's been great for us. Uh, tons of good restaurants. Of course, everybody's aware of all the sporting activities. I'm a little bit embarrassed to tell you, I did not know of the arts scene until we came to Cleveland, but we've been to the theater district at least 15 times in just a, in, in, in that, brief period of time. So, we, so we've really enjoyed that. So it's been really good for us. So uh, I want to thank everyone and thank everyone for welcoming us into their community. So now, if it's okay, I'll kind of quickly transition to, to what Dominion is focused on and, and what I'm focused on. And uh, as I indicated, uh, 30 plus years in the energy business, I cannot tell you how invigorated I am about the energy business right now. And uh, thinking about, you know, all those decades that I've been involved right now, I don't think that there's a more exciting time in the energy business than there is right now. And uh, I've worked both on the natural gas side, on the electric side, on the nuclear side. So I've seen, seen a lot of different things. But one of the things that I, I continue to impress uh, across our 1,500 employees, and everybody remembers we have about 1.2 million customers in 35 counties across Ohio, and as I indicated, roughly 1,500 employees. And the challenge that I kind of lay out every day in almost every conversation is, is we have three things that we need to stay focused on. And as we serve these communities, those three things are, one, you know, overall safety, okay, got, got to be focused on overall safety. Two, we've got to do a cleaner. 
And I would, I would lay out that challenge to every energy source, whether you're in the natural gas business, whether you are in renewable energy via solar, wind, whatever, always can do it cleaner. Because remember, these are the communities that we serve and we live in. So always focus on the environment. And then the last thing is, it has always got to start with a customer. That's why we are here. We are a public service company. We serve the public at the end of the day. That is our challenge. And so when you think about that order, customer comes first, safety comes second, and then environment, I don't want to say third, but it's, a, it's, you know, it's in that top three of priorities. If you do those three things well, it is amazing how everything else will take care of itself. Okay, always got to start with those, with those basic premises. So I, I appreciate how the, the lead in there about stay on target, because really you can't let the side issues get in the way. They will kind of overwhelm you if you don't. So, um, I, and I think the employees here have done really, really well. We're really proud of our history in, in Ohio. And, and when I think about it, and I saw some folks that are on the Cleveland Public Power, I saw some of the RSCPs, and I'm sure they would say the, the same things here. There's a reason they're called, we are called public service companies and serving the public. Just about everything starts with us. When you think about providing safe and reliable energy, when you think about uh, economic development, that is one of the economic development almost always starts with the power industry, whether it's gas, water, and I consider, excuse me, gas, electric, and I consider water as in, in that same vein. When you think about locating an ex a new business, when you think about an expansion of an existing business, all those things start with us, okay? And sometimes we make decisions that candidly don't work out on paper financially, but they are ultimately the right thing to do. So, you know, I, I just, it candidly all starts with us. And so I'm proud of that. Um, but I'm also recognized the responsibility that we in, in the industry bear when it comes to that. Um, you know, you'd mentioned, you know, our role, the Dominion's role in the Cleveland leadership. We talk about Akron, we talk about Canton, we talk about Youngstown. These are communications that we have going on with them all the time. One of the things that I am concerned about is when I think about new business growth in Northeast Ohio, and of course we have the Western Ohio part uh, over on the Indiana border out in the Lima area as well. But when we think about future economic development, I am very concerned about the limited number of sites that are ready to go as new companies come in. It's, it's really, really low. And this is something that all the chambers, I think, are universally talking to the state about. We have got to expand those services. When I mean new services, I mean utility functions out to these, to these sites to get ready for the next round of big manufacturing, whether it's, you know, whether it's in the in the in the side of the business that is on what I'll call the computer side, or whether it is on you know the next Amazon, whatever it is, that has got to be a focus area for Ohio. And I think that is something that, you know, the community leaders, the ones that I've talked to, I think that is an issue that we all are in agreement on, that we have got to step forward and do that. But at the same time, we have got to be thinking about the roles that we serve in our communities and, and the rates that our, our customers pay. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about this today. You'll see a story out there today that Dominion filed for a rate increase you know, for our 1.2 million customers. This is the first, when you think about natural gas rates, it's really kind of boiled down into two buckets. The one bucket is... This is what I'll call capital improvements. And those are the improvements out there where your expansion of service, you're making your system safer by new facilities or whatnot. I know a lot of community leaders and I know everybody on this call is already a community leader, but a lot of people are surprised to find Dominions, we've been spending about $500 million a year in improvements to our system for many years. Think about that, 500 million just in safety improvements, compliance improvements, expansion of services, all that. So that's kind of one bucket of money. The other bucket of money is, this is the, the part that's where salaries, buildings, taxes, all that is kind of rolled over into the other bucket. 
we have not sought a, an increase in that in that area, what we call it base rates, since 2008. And that's what you'll see in the story today. And it's and it's a big rate increase. I'll be the first one to say that. And it's one that we take very seriously because look, we pay bills too. We understand that. And nobody likes to ask for a rate increase and nobody likes to pay a rate increase. So we, we get that. But it has been 15 years. And I think the one thing, and I'll be surprised if I don't get a question about that today, as a reminder, these are a recovery of costs that we've already spent. So it's not always about future dollars. It's about recovering of dollars that we've already spent. So you'll see it's about a 16% rate increase that we've requested. This would go into effect in the 2025 timeframe. And this is basically the beginning of the process where we file this with the state. People can come in, give their opinions about that. But I will tell you, in leading up to this, as we've talked to community leaders over the past several months, when we've indicated this was, was forthcoming, nobody likes rate increases, and they certainly don't like it either. But as you talk about it and understand that is the because we've not had an increase in this area um, for roughly 15 years, people are surprised about that, and have been pretty understanding. So I'm not in any way saying they like it, but they've been pretty understanding. So, so a lot of a lot of attention in that area, and then of course the other piece is that you know we've been very much in the news of late is that um, Dominion Energy, which owns Dominion Energy Ohio, made the decision a few months ago to sell our business. So they have decided that they want to focus on the electric side of the business, and have decided to sell the gas uh, utilities. Ohio was one of those, the one that we have in North Carolina. And then the ones that we have out west, which we call Questar, which is in the Utah, Wyoming area. So Dominion has made that decision to sell that. And you know what? And at the end of the day, sometimes decisions, companies make decisions that, you know, that, that they have to think about what the future is and, and where they're going as a business. I understand that for, with Dominion making that decision. But at the same time, I, I could not be more excited about our new owner. Our, our new owner is a company that already has facilities in Ohio. It's actually based in Canada. It's a very large natural gas company and oil company called Enbridge, headquartered in Calgary, uh, Canada, major operations in the Toronto area. And uh, we've been spending a lot of time with them. They are very focused and very bullish on long-term natural gas business, which is, which is music to our ears. Everybody wants to be in a business where they, where they see alignment. So once the sale is, con is done, they will have almost 7 million customers across the, the Enbridge system. When I say 7 million customers, I mean 7 million customer accounts. So when you think about that, if you, if you think that there's four people per every account, I mean, you know, you're, you're having a, you're in, you are part of a company that's privileged to serve about 28 million people every day, huge responsibility. But at the same time, you know, as they've talked about, and looked at our operations, we see a lot of similarities about how they operate, how we will operate. So uh, I'm a pretty positive guy, but I got to tell you, I'm pretty really excited about the future uh, of what the, the company in Ohio will look like, because I know how excited they are about us. Um, I will also say, as we've kind of worked through the process, the 1,500 employees, of course, there's always unrest when you think about you know, benefits and compensation and all those things are all guaranteed. But I would tell you overwhelmingly the employees in Ohio are excited about moving the transition to, to Enbridge. So that'll take place in, in the first quarter of 24. So uh, a lot of things going on in the energy business right now. But I guess before I open it up to any questions, I, I, one of the things I get all the time, people ask me, where do I see energy, specifically natural gas going long term. I, I will tell you, couldn't be more excited about it, especially when I think about the new technologies that are coming down the road, specifically hydrogen. Hydrogen is the next big step out there. There is no doubt in my mind. You know, a lot of people are surprised that we're already testing hydrogen here in Ohio. We're, we have it our, at our training facility. We're already working on a blending where we would add hydrogen to the system and customers won't know the difference, but when you think about how positive for the environment that hydrogen is, um, transportation fuel is the next step of that. So there is, there's a lot of positive things going on in the energy business in Ohio. So uh, we're just privileged to be a part of it. 
So again, thanks for the opportunity to be here today and look forward to the questions. Dan, thank you so much. Let's jump in. You had mentioned the need for land for new business growth. How do you feel Cleveland can best address meeting that need? Yeah, so one of the things that's out there, and, and I really don't like this term, but it's kind of used in, in the industry all the time. People use the term shovel ready. And when businesses come in, whether it's Intel and Columbus or whether it's you know the Amazons of the world or whatever, they always look for a site that they can go to a single entity, whether it's a development authority, an individual landowner, but they're always going to use the term shovel ready. And as I indicated, I don't like the term because it doesn't mean anything. You know, we like to say that. But if you wanted to have a shovel ready site and what that really means in industry terms is that means it's got electric gas and water added to it as well as fiber. OK, if you've got those four things, you are cutting years off the process about getting a site that's really ready for development out there. And, and the state of Ohio has been a good partner when it comes to that. Sure, there's ways that we can improve that um, about you know, so the utilities have, have a little bit of ability to build before the customer is actually named. But we've got to be able to speed up that process. Most of the big developers are not going to wait multiple years for a site. They, they just won't. Okay, They're going to go somewhere else. And we've seen states like New York ha that have been saying Ohio does not have enough of sites ready to go come to New York. And that's actually part of their pitch. So having places like Cleveland partner with the, the regional areas about getting these sites ready for the next round um, is, is really, really important. And, and I, I got to tell you, I have I have seen folks like, you know, Beiju and others been very outspoken about that and, and thinking that this is this absolutely needs to be done. I always say it this way. R communities should think of utilities as their partner. OK, because if, if everybody wants to succeed, you got to get, get everybody in the camp. And it's really important for Cleveland. To, and the surrounding areas to think about that in the future. There's been a lot of conversations about workforce issues. Is Dominion facing the worker shortage that other companies experience and how might you be addressing it? So the short answer is we are, okay? Um, right now, I don't have, I get, I, I get an update every Monday. And, and when I say that there are, as I indicated, there are roughly 1,500 employees right now we have about 80 vacancies as of two days ago, okay? So we have been in constant hiring mode and every one of those vacancies is posted right now. So if you know some good folks, hey, send them our way because it, it is truly a great place to work. But I think a lot of people are surprised that in the last oh, probably 16 months or so, we've hired about 160 people, which is great, but it's also a challenge. The challenge is by the time you go through our training program um, and get comfortable in your work, it is a multi-year process, okay? So turning over more than 10% of your workforce in one year is a big deal, especially when you think about a company like Dominion that we have employees on call 24 hours a day, all kinds of weather to get out there. Uh, it, it's a big step. I will tell you, I see improvement in Ohio uh, when, when it comes to our recruitment. And I want to thank the folks at Dominion who are working really hard on that. You're seeing us get more involved with folks right in high school and where, you know, we will be paying for them to go to the technical schools or we will get them in the, the two and four year degrees. You're seeing more programs out there where we will, as we recruit them to come in and, 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 we have a really good relationship with our union. Our union, you know, is our gas workers union, which has more than a thousand members. We actually have scholarships and intern programs exclusively for union company. Uh, excuse, excuse me, exclusively for union membership. Okay, and so their president is a gentleman by the name of Eddie Hall. He's been a really good partner and understands how important that it is. And I think is, you know, I don't want to speak for him, but I think he's pretty pleased with the amount of hiring and as much effort as we're trying to get to uh, when it comes to overall headcount. 
I don't believe that um, having employees work a ton of overtime is the path for long-term success. You, you are basically, you know, you know, you're, you'll just wear out your workforce when you're doing that. And, and he understands that and understands in our recruitment. But uh, I will tell you, workforce recruitment is a common, <laughs> is a common um, topic on just about all these community meetings. It always, everybody talks about how difficult it is to hire employees right now. So I feel like we're better than a lot, but not as good as we, as we hope for. Dan, you mentioned a focus being around kind of clean energy. Can you speak more about clean energy, green technology that Dominion is focused on? Yeah, uh, I love this topic, as you can tell. Um, and the reason I put out that challenge out there is, look, at the end of the day, these are communities where we live and work and our kids go to school and everybody should have the challenge of being greener. So when I look at Dominion Electric side, let's put lay that aside. You know, when you look at the amount of solar energy that Dominion is putting on their system, you know, in our in our primary states of electric based, which is, you know, Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina, those are our primary electric states. When I look at the amount of electric, in, excuse me, electric infrastructure development like solar energy, it's pretty amazing. I, I will also say what has really changed in that in the last, I don't know, five or seven years is everybody knew solar was going to be the next big thing. But the thing that was always holding that back was, was storage. When you think about battery storage, that, that's what was holding, you know, uh, solar energy back because th those solar panels in rough terms were, were generating power about 35% of the time. You know, at the end of the day, electricity is still the only commodity that has to be consumed as it is manufactured until storage came in, you know, when it came to battery storage in the last handful of years, you know, and, and was indicated, you know, in my, in one of my previous roles is I was responsible for the development and uh, innovation technologies, had a whole team working on it. And, and uh, I was on the implementation side of, of that business. And one of the programs that I'm candidly really most surprised about is um, a few years ago, we, put about 50 electric school buses out there in our electric service territory. We, we put them on the grid and powered exclusively by, um, and these were electric power only. They weren't hybrids or anything else, exclusively electric powered school buses. And the part that was the coolest in all that was those, those school bus batteries could actually feed back onto the grid when we needed them to, when the school buses weren't operating. So we, we came up with these, operating agreements with all these school districts for that for those 50 buses and i saw a story just today where one of the counties that we provided a handful of buses to had had already reached a million miles on those school buses and the, and the reaction from the school bus um, drivers as well as the school systems and the students has been overwhelmingly because i think we all have these experiences where we're sitting at stoplight the school bus is sitting in front of you and the exhaust coming out of that school bus. And I've seen a bunch of studies about this. I saw most studies say that the air quality inside a school bus is about five times worse than it is outside the school bus. And I remember another study that said it was nine times worse. So there's no question there's air quality impacts inside the school buses. But that, those are some of the things that you're just seeing the, the industry move really far ahead. I'll give you another example. We're really excited that Ohio and the program and the, and the effort that we had moving forward about hydrogen was one of the ones selected by the federal government. We're really proud of that. OK, um, I think hydrogen is the future. I think it, it's a it's a great blending fuel for natural gas customers. I believe hydrogen will be the dominant um, transportation fuel for heavy industry. OK, look, I think electric vehicles which is the light duty sedans, whatnot. I think that's going to be very big. I think everybody sees that. And I see that for what I'll call mid-commercial vehicles as well, where I don't see electric vehicles being the dominant force is in heavy transportation. When it comes to the tractor trailers, the long hauls, uh, even people have been talking about electric airplanes, and I know that there is some that are manufacturing out there. Um, the range issue and the weight. 
is what they can't get over right now. Okay. And I just, I just don't see that changing in, in the near future, but hydrogen on the other hand is I continue to believe will be the dominant fuel for what I'll call the heavy haul and all the big main plane manufacturers, the Boeings of the world, the Airbuses of the world, they're all investing heavily in hydrogen uh, powered airplanes as well. So I, I think it's really exciting about that. So Dan, as you begin to look ahead into your second year in this role, what keeps you up at night? Uh, I, same thing keeps me up every night, safety, okay? Because that, that's the piece that I am, I always am gonna start with safety. Every single thing that we do starts off with safety. And um, it's not that our folks um, are operating an unsafe system because that's just not true. But when you think about the things that can happen about acts of violence, or we, look, we had a serious car accident, you know, you know, in the last few weeks where regrettably a house, a car ran into a house and sheared off the meter that was inside, you know, those are the things that by far, the system will run itself, system is inherently safe. But one of the things that we really continue to impress upon our employees, just like most businesses, we, we operate to a standard. And that standard is, is adhered to, or excuse me, overseen by both the state and the federal government. Th those standards are the minimum. Dominion is never going to be a company that works to the minimum. Those are the minimum standards, okay? That's not the way that, that you know, I, I will allow the railroad to run, you know, forgive the pun, but it's just not. Nobody wants to work to the minimum, okay? And we're just not going to do that at Dominion. So that's the thing that keeps me up most, more than anything else. Employee and public safety, or customer safety, I guess is a better way of saying it. So over this past year, you've had the sale, you're going through the rate increase. So some changes that you've had to navigate with your team. What advice would you give to other organizations who are looking at these challenges and changes within their own space? Yeah, um, it's kind of the way I started this. Think about what your core mission is. And then think about those three things in Dominion's case. And stay on target. I know that the old saying from remember the Star Wars movie when they were, you know, they were stay on target, stay on target, and that type of thing. Stay on target. Don't let the don't let the side issues eat you up. Okay. Um, I, I am so big on those three things. Focus on the customer, focus on safety, focus on the environment. Okay. Everything else will work out. And every business has those those things that they, they should do. I think the other thing that um, is really important for business is, is um, I'm a real big on shadow of the leader. And, and what I mean by that is um, I am not going to make every decision when it comes to Dominion. Surround yourself at Dominion. We call them directors and a general manager. Serve your, surround yourself with good leaders. Get input. They know the system better than you do. If, you know, I've seen leaders in the past who have tried to make every decision themselves, and, and I just don't believe that that is a path for success. Um, I, I don't know how you build accountability into an organization when every decision is made. Of course, the ultimate responsibility rests with me and every other leader that's on this call. But take the advice and input from people that are around you. And, and, and when you do that, it will be a healthier organization and a better organization long term, in the long run. That is a perfect place to end. Uh, you have given us great inspiration and great takeaways with your last comments. So thank you. And thank you for the leadership that you are demonstrating in Northeast Ohio. Yes, for Dominion, but also for our communities. We're very grateful.